This is the first session of Ask Me Anything. So for those of you who are tuning in expecting a live class, my apologies. I have a small muscle strain in my lower back. Uh, nothing to worry about, but it means I won't be able to do the live class today. So in place of that, I thought we'd have an Ask Me Anything session. So you can ask any questions that you may have, and hopefully the chat will work on the side here, and um, I'll be able to see those questions and answer them for you in, in real time. Now, until we have any questions come along, what I'll do is I'll just take this opportunity to tell you a little bit about what Kalari Lab has planned for 2022. Now, we already have a 108 lesson course. The first 37 lessons are currently available on the YouTube channel to members who join the channel. So you can join the channel for $9.99 and then you'll be able to follow through that course. We also have... Um, we also have live classes once a week, which would usually be at this time. And we have other content coming in. At the moment, we're running a few different series. We're running Kalari Archive, where we're showing you um, footage from um, some older videos. Hello there, Joby. Thank you. Welcome. Um, we're showing some old um, video footage of my Guru Kal Sharifka working with Yope Lemons, who was the double, uh, two times, world heavyweight kickboxing champion. And when he first visited Kerala back in 19, I think it was 1990. Thank you. Yes, I am doing okay, Dr. Jovi. Um, nothing too serious, just a small muscle strain. So I just need to give it rest for a few days. Um, so when Yope Lemons first visited Kanua and began his training, uh, he, um, he received treatment from Sharif Kurkal, Kalari treatment, as well as training. And you will see some excerpts from those training videos and some of the, the focus practices that he did in the archive section. Another series we're running is Kalari Reloaded, where what I'm doing is I'm pulling out from some of the old footage that we've done over the last year, a uh, year and a half, and just putting together some of the best bits. Because I know a lot of the viewers on the channel are quite new and have not seen some of this old footage. So I'm just giving you an opportunity to see that. Now, what we're looking at, <coughs> excuse me, what we're looking at doing in the next year is something very exciting. We're going to create a new app. And what this app will do is it will try to gamify the experience of learning Kalari. So there will be a few stages to this app. The first thing that you will do when opening the app is have an opportunity to design your avatar. Your avatar, you can choose their hair, their clothing, their skin color, their eye color. You can choose their body type. You can also um, give them a different weapon. Then what will happen is you will enter into the game and the game will have a one player mode and a two player mode. For the one player mode, you will basically have a map and you will have a quest to go on in order to go through that map. That quest is written by one of my students, Shajit. Uh, Shajit is a writer and what she is doing is she is pulling out some stories from ancient Kerala mythology. And so you will essentially be the protagonist in that quest and you will go on a, a journey through uh, to complete that quest. And as you go through the quest, you will complete the lessons. So we will have the 16 lessons of the level one course spread along this map. So you travel along lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, lesson four, and so on. Now, what we also have to try to gamify this experience is an opportunity every week for you to have a split screen. And on one half of the screen, you will see me doing a posture or a kuvadu, a movement sequence, and you will replicate that. When you are happy with your replication, your, your version of that, you will hit submit, you'll send it through to us, and I will see it, and I will then be able to grade it. So I will give you then a feedback in points for your, for your practice. So long as it's um, safe, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, so long as what you're doing is safe, I'll progress you on to the next part of the game, and you'll move on to the next two lessons, and it will be like that every week. So once a week, or perhaps twice a week, we're not quite sure yet, you'll have this opportunity to submit to us how you are doing the practice. So what we'll then have is we'll have this um, platform game that you can move through simply, you'll have a map, and you'll have within that map embedded the lessons, and as I say, this opportunity for you to give feedback. That will be the one player version in the first, um, let's say the first, sorry, the first version of the game. We will later develop this game and we're looking to really make it um, move into this new metaverse that's coming, kind of going to come about over the next few years so that it become very much a virtual playing experience. Now, this is all the one player version. The two player version is something I'm personally a little bit excited about because it's hopefully going to build some kind of um, 
interaction between you all. So imagine uh, something like Google Earth, where you have a globe. And on that globe, you can move the globe around. And on the globe, you'll see represented as avatars all of the different players. So as a player, you choose and design your avatar. And then your avatar will appear on that globe in the location where you are living. So let's say you live in Haridwar. Then in Haridwar, there will be your little avatar. And when uh, another player goes on and clicks on your avatar, they'll be able to see your name and your age. And they'll be able to see what lesson you have reached. So let's say you've reached lesson nine and another player looking to see you has also reached lesson nine. Or let's say they've reached lesson 12 or lesson six. In either case, there's going to be some common ground, some common practice that you could do together. So then they'll have the opportunity to click on your avatar and to write to you and to say, hey, hi, my name is so-and-so, and, -so, and uh, I would like to play with you and uh, or play with you and practice Kalari with you. And then you can arrange a time and then you can use the, the inbuilt um, platform within the game to have a split screen and you can both then go ahead and practice your uh, practice your your Kalari together now we will get we will reward all of these um, activities with points so whether it's you progressing through the game and showing that you're regularly practicing hi there legend thank you for um, commenting hello um, so if you're um, if you're practicing every day let's say you practice five days a week then we will give you points for doing that. If you take two rest days a week, which is what we prescribe, then we will give you points for that. And if you complete five full training days and two rest days in the one week, so you do all seven days as we have suggested, again, we will give you points for that. So there will be an opportunity for you to earn points simply through effort. We will also give you points if you work um, if you work uh, for your performance. So if your performance is good, we will, re we will reward that. We will reward performance from, I'm thinking, from 10 to 50 points, and we will reward effort for 10 points per day, plus another 10 points for your two rest days. So you could get 70 points for your effort and 50 points for your um, proficiency, your, your performance, or uh, I choose not to use the word performance, let's say technique. So you have an opportunity then each week to earn up to 120 points. And then uh, when you get halfway through the level and when you get to the end of the level, so when you get to lesson eight and when you get to lesson 16 of level one, again, you will be rewarded with points. I'm thinking at this stage, 50 points for getting halfway and 100 points for getting to the end. So that means that over the 16 weeks, sorry, the eight weeks, the 16 lessons of, lesson, of level one, you will have an opportunity to, to, to accrue those points. Now, what this means um, at this stage is um, you will have um, points that you can then um, simply have uh, represented next to your avatar. But what we're really looking to do in the future is to introduce a cryptocurrency. So what you can basically do, instead of earning points, you can earn crypto coin. And we're gonna create our own coin, the Kalari coin. So this is something that you will be able to earn through playing. Now the Clary coin will not be ready at the time the game is first released. It's gonna take us a little bit longer just to make sure the game is running properly, to make sure there are no bugs that we need to um, iron out, or at least to iron out the bugs that we do find. But once the game is running properly, we're going to introduce the crypto coin. And I'm very excited about this because I think it will give um, all of our players, uh, in, in, uh, you know, um, it doesn't matter how much money you are earning uh, or where you are living, you will still have the same ability to earn these points and to earn the cryptocurrency. So it will give you an ability to actually to get something back for your training. And I think what we've got here is quite something quite innovative, something quite unique. As I understand, there are already games where you can play, but they're more like, you know, shoot them up games with a gun and you go around and there you can earn the cryptocurrency. There are also other games where you, you sweat and when you, uh, sorry, you, you walk and it's called the sweat coin and you get rewarded simply for walking. But to have a game where you're actually rewarded for your effort and for your technique and for your diligence in practice, your consistency of practice, I think this is something quite unique. So I'm really looking to, to get some support for this and I'm going to be reaching out to try to get some, um, some people behind us on this project to try and push it through to get it um, successful. What I'm also really hoping to do is to make this app free for those who can't afford it. So that what that will mean is that we, we uh, provide the app at a certain fee for people, 
but then we allow people to pay extra. And those people who can pay extra will mean that other people who can't afford it can play for free. And the reason we're doing that is we want people um, to have access to Kalari. Um, doesn't matter, you know, independent of how much money you have, we don't want that to be something that restricts you from being able to access this, this, um, this practice. Yeah, I personally have gained a lot from practicing in Kalari, and my students have gained a lot from practicing. And what we are hoping to do with this new app is to make it available and to make it more exciting and engaging for people of all ages, but particularly young people. So we're looking to reach out probably to some uh, charities based in India where they are connected with younger people, uh, younger people who perhaps don't have so much money, um, who, whose parents can't afford to engage them in, the, in the, the, the current program on YouTube and to give them a way to, to engage and uh, to be able to benefit from this practice. Ah, thank you, Harshit. Yes, I think it sounds good too. Yeah, I'm quite excited about this. So that's something that we're looking to do as we go forward. Okay, now, um, no questions have popped up yet, so I'll just keep talking. Um, let me just give you a very, a very brief summary of what we've done so far with Kalari Lab. So we are in the process of creating a 108 lesson course. We've recorded 40 lessons. We've uploaded 37 of those to YouTube. And if you look at the Kalari Bytes section, you'll see a five minute bite from each one of those lessons. What you'll see there is something very progressive, starting from the basics, moving through the basic elements of Northern style Kalari and introducing some Southern and Central style. So to clarify here, there are three styles of Kalari Payat. In fact, within those styles, there are also many variations. Okay, I'm just seeing a question here from Vikash on how to get quick recovery from joint injuries. I'll come back to that in a few seconds, Vikash. Let me just finish this point. So there are three styles of Kalari and these three styles, they um, emanate from the three different regions of Kerala. So Northern style uh, Kalari is from the North, Southern style from the South and Central style from the Center. Um, Okay, so uh, there's another question just come in saying that you're unable to unlock the paid course. So that's a more quick question than the first one. So I'll answer that first. If you, if you are using an iPhone, I, uh, Apple block YouTube. So if you're using an iPhone submit and that's submit and that's the reason uh, perhaps you cannot c connect to the course, please answer me back and let me know if you're using an iPhone. If you're using an iPhone, then what you need to do is to log in to YouTube under your uh, Google account as normal, but on a computer, on a laptop. Then you will be able to access the paid course. You can sign up, you can join, you can make the small payment, and then automatically the lessons will be available back on your iPhone again afterwards. It's a bit of a workaround, but unfortunately that's, that's the little block that iPhone have. Um, it doesn't, iPhone, you're not using an iPhone. Okay, um, so I, when you click on the join button submit, and does it not give you the option to, um, you have a blue, do you see a blue join button? When you click that, do you not get uh, an option to sign up and to, to enter your payment details? And I'm going to come back to the question, Vikash, about the, the, the knee. Sir, please, I am video step-by-step -step IO paid online class. I'm not quite sure what you mean. Is that a question? Um, I'm not quite sure if you could reiterate that question for me. I'll go back to the joint question. So let's say you have a problem in your joints. Rest, ice, compress, elevate. This is the most important thing that you're doing, okay? Thank you very much, SBD. I appreciate that. Yes, we are doing our best to keep this practice alive, uh, as are many others, but we are, we are doing our best here at Kalari Lab as well. Um, so when you have a joint injury, first, rest. Okay, it's very important to give rest. Then, um, ice, apply ice. Okay, so you want to take an ice pack or a bag of frozen vegetables and you want to put it onto the joint and you want to keep it there for 15 minutes, only 15 minutes, then take it off for 15 minutes. Then you can put it on again for 15 minutes, off again for 15 minutes and then on again for 15 minutes. I would advise to do three periods of 15 minutes. Then leave it to rest, okay? Put a compression bandage around. What the compression bandage will do and what the ice will do is help to bring down the inflammation. 
when you have a joint injury, the first thing that happens is the body will uh, create this inflammation. You know, when you are driving along the road and there is an accident and you will see in order to repair the accident, uh, they have uh, they put some cones around. They may even put a tent there and they fix the, the, um, the road underneath. At, at least in some countries they are doing like that. Um, so what's basically happening there is they're creating the space in which to do the repair. The same happens in your joints. So when there's an injury, the body will swell up and then it will bring in all the blood it needs. The blood will contain all the nutrients and the, all the proteins needed to repair this area. Oh, thank you, Rashai. Um, Sumit, great, that's good. I'm very glad you're on one to four. So please explain to me a bit more about the problem you're having with accessing the, the paid course and I'll try to answer it for you. In the meantime, I'll carry on explaining about joint recovery. So rest, ice, then compression. So you put the compression bandage around. You want to put a bandage around the joint. If it's the knee joint, you want to make sure that you go, well, let's say elbow. You want to make sure you go from just below the elbow to just above. Uh, Nami, I'll come on to this question about Kalari, at what age to start in one moment. Um, you apply that compression. What that will do is it will help to bring down the inflammation. So what we're really trying to do is to here is to assist the body in moving through the stages of healing. So first you get the body will create this inflammation. So you want to bring down the inflammation to help it move into the next stage of laying down new tissue proliferation. Then it will go into remodeling. Okay, so rest, ice and compress. The ice and compress will help to bring down the inflammation and then elevate. Bring the joint up or the injured joint up above the height of the heart. Okay, if it's my elbow, I could put my elbow up here. Yeah, that will mean that the blood is running away from it. Okay, so that will help the blood to move away from the joint. Okay, so all of these three measures are helping to reduce the pressure. Now, I would also say it's good to take pain relief if you need to work on move still. So let's say you've injured your ankle or your knee. You don't take pain relief, then you're going to compensate and put the weight on the other leg. And you will end up with a problem on the other leg. So if you cannot take complete rest, if you need to keep moving, that is a reason to take pain medication. Whether you take herbal medication or whether you take allopathic Western pharmaceutical medication, in either case, what it will do is it will give you a chance to offset the pressure on that joint, allow you to keep using it, okay? But in an ideal world, you really want to rest. Now, once you've brought the inflammation down, you can then look at um, restructuring it using exercise. Now, an alternative to using the ice would be to take a more traditional approach using Ayurvedic or Kalari medicine techniques. One technique that we have is to use um, mama pa um, Mamani powder. So mamani powder is made from the bark of four trees. The bark from these trees is ground into a powder. You can buy this powder from Ayurvedic pharmacies or you can buy the small pellets which you grind yourself into the powder. This powder you then mix with the white of the egg. So you take an egg, you make a small hole, you allow the white to come out, the yolk will stay inside. You then take the, the white and you mix it with the brown powder. This will make, um, this will make um, like a a kind of um, a gooey kind of substance and then you can put that over the joint you put that all over the joint um, using these two fingers these are your healing fingers this one and this one fingers number three and number four use these two fingers to put the marmani paste paste that's the word paste onto the joint and then wrap a cloth around and then put some more paste onto the cloth this will then absorb into the body it will help to reduce the inflammation in the same way like ice, but it will also provide nutrients from the bark of the tree. These nutrients will help to uh, accelerate the healing process. Yeah. So unfortunately here in, in France at the moment, I don't have any Marmani paste. So I had to put some uh, more uh, Western medicine onto my back. But if you have a joint injury or a muscle injury, in fact, you can use this Marmani paste to reduce the inflammation. Okay. Now, once the inflammation has gone down, then you want to look at very gradually, first mobilizing the joint. Now, the, the joint mobility needs to be pain-free. You want to be looking at not creating pain, but looking at the different movements that the joint is making, okay? And try to move the joint through these different move movements uh, without creating pain. Once that is okay, once you feel you are getting that mobility in the joint, you can start to add resistance. 
So slight pressure against resistance in those different movements that it is making. Once that is okay, then you can look at starting to put weight through the joint very carefully. Again, pain-free. Always make sure there is no pain. If you are getting pain, you are going on too fast. So step back and take it a little bit more easy, okay? I will do another video on this because this is quite an in-depth subject, but that gives you a kind of first, first approach to it. So rest, ice, compress, and elevate. If you don't, if you have available, you can use Marmani paste. Um, okay, Harshit, I'll come to that question in one moment. I'm just going to answer the previous question that was on um, what age to begin Kalari. Now, traditionally, Kalari has started between the ages of 6 to 12. For some children, they are not ready until 8. Some children, they are ready at 6. The reason this is, is because some children, they have too much going on, uh, you know, they're too much vata or too much um, agitated and they cannot focus even just for those 15-20 minutes. So when children are starting, somewhere between 20 minutes, 40 minutes is long enough. So let's say, oops, uh, let's say the child is ready to start practicing and they're able to start practicing. Um, thank you for that, uh, Malayli. Yes, absolutely. I, I uh, have great respect for the people of Kerala, always. Uh, you have given me very much. Always grateful for that. And so let's say the child is ready somewhere around the age of eight to start practicing Kalari. As I said, some at the age of six. You're a contortionist. <laughs> Great. Um, that's very good. Um, you'll be great for Kalari then. Um, so when you start between the ages of six and eight, the guna or temperament is much more plastic, much softer, less formed. As we go through life, we become that little bit more formed. That's not to say that you won't always be able to start Kalari. I have some students starting at 60 and they still experience <coughs> some of the emotional and mental, well, um, benefits from the practice. Yeah? You'll still get more focused. You'll still get more confident. You'll still get more disciplined. You can still work on improving um, your devotion, your respect, your uh, intolerance for other people. All of these benefits are still there as well as the physical. But when you start at the younger age, <clears throat> when you start as a child or during your adolescent years, then the real benefit you have or the real benefit your child will have is the practice will help to keep, to keep their, um, their temperament in check, if you like. Let's say the child is very lethargic. You can use Kalari to bring them up a little bit, to give them a bit more dynamism. Let's say the child, on the other hand, is very hyperactive, overexcited. Then you can use Kalari to help to calm them down and to bring them some stillness. So the practice is very useful for being able to find some middle ground, middle way for the child. It can help children to become more focused in their schoolwork. It can help children to become uh, better behaved, you know, less mischievous because they are more under control in that way. Not in a negative way, but simply they are they are able to focus more and they are able to be more diligent on what they are doing. Okay, so short answer to your question is that probably your child at the age of three and a half is a bit young for practice, but by the age of six, they could try. And if, if it still seems a little bit too young, then by the age of eight, almost certainly they will be ready. So somewhere between six and eight is the best time to start Kalari. I started at 20, much later than that. I, I wish I had known about Kalari 14 years before. Uh, but I still feel very lucky to have found out about it by the age of 20. Okay, now the last question that came in um, was from Harshit, and that was about um, an Ayurvedic book for food. Okay, so um, I don't actually know uh, off the top of my head any good books for food. Um, I kept a lot of recipes from my time when I was in Kerala, and I wrote those recipes down, and they were from uh, Lakshmirchi, who was cooking in our kitchen. And uh, sometimes uh, um, uh, she was assisted and um, Kanjana, Kanjana was helping her. So uh, either Kanjana or Lakshmirchi were cooking for us. And I wrote down a lot of recipes for them. But what I can say is that Ayurveda, what it does stress is that there is not really such a thing as good food for everyone or bad food for everyone. We are all very different. Our constitutions are all very different and therefore the food that is best for us is going to be different. Saying that, 
we all do need the macros. We all need proteins. We all need carbs. We all need our um, fats. And we all need a balance of vitamins and minerals. Especially if you're practicing Kalari, you need a good amount of protein and a good amount of carbs. This is going to help you to, to build the muscles and to repair the muscles after injury. Uh, so that's one thing I could add going back to the joint injury problem. Make sure you get your proteins after that. Make sure you're giving your body what it needs to build new, um, new tissue in that joint and to fix it. Yeah, so make sure you've got your proteins going in. Okay? So um, whether you are vegetarian or non-vegetarian, you can still have the best recipe for acid reflux. Okay, I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, so whether you are vegetarian or non-vegetarian, um, there is still plenty of proteins available. Yeah, We all know that gorillas and elephants uh, are some of the biggest herbivores on the planet, very big animals, and they don't eat any meat. So certainly there is a huge amount of protein available just from eating seeds, nuts, and beans. If you are eating vegetarian, I would stress um, uh, that it's good to have uh, the green gram and chickpeas. These give you good proteins available to the body. Yeah? You want to get the full range of amino acids available in the proteins to help build that tissue. So uh, I think the guide is to try to have eight um, portions of fruit or vegetables per day. So, you know, make sure you're getting those. And um, if you're trying to sustain your weight, one gram of protein per kilogram. So my weight is around 74 kilograms at the moment, so I would need to have at least 74 kilograms, uh, grams rather, of protein. In fact, I am trying to put on weight at the moment because I was sick a little while ago and lost some weight. So I'm trying to have up towards two grams of protein per gram, uh, sorry, per kilogram of body weight. So I'm looking to have around about 150 um, of, <laughs> thank you, uh, looking to have one, 150 grams of um protein per day at the moment and it's working quite well i'm putting on weight i put on about seven kilos in the last eight weeks so i think i'm on track so look around try to find a book that acknowledges that it's important to um to uh, recognize the constitution of the individual and if you find a book that is acknowledging that and is giving you diets for those who are vata dominant or vata pitta dominant or kapha dominant and bear in mind usually you're always a variance of these you're not going to be strictly one or the other and it's going to change during your life you're going to go through periods in your life when the vata is higher or the kapha is higher or the pitta is higher so um, make sure you find a book that is acknowledging this but i would say first of all go and see an ayurvedic doctor and discuss with them what they think is your dominant prakruti and your dominant vitri, vikruti, vikruti. Yes, so your, your constitution when you are born and your constitution as it has changed during your life. Yes, this latter one is actually probably more important because this is going to affect how you are now. Okay, uh, the last question that came in about acid reflux. Okay, I can't really answer this question as well as I would like to. Um, I'm not uh, a specialist in, 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 in internal medicine or food. So I will answer it just simply based on what I can say. Um, I think what's important is to try and introduce alkaline foods rather than acid foods. So you can easily look online and see which foods are more acid, which foods are more alkaline. One of the foods um, is very easily available, at least here in the West, and I, I think probably also in India, is um, apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is very um, alkaline. So when I have problems with acid reflux, what I do, I take in the morning um, a small amount of apple cider vinegar in the glass and I put into there. Ah, oh, that's great, Alan. You're also learning Kalari. Uh, we'd be interested to hear from what school you are learning. Uh, so you take a small amount of apple cider vinegar in a glass. You can add to that some honey, stir in the honey, Add some hot water that will help to loosen up the honey and drink it. Drink that first thing in the morning and you can have again in the evening if you like as well. What this will do, it will alkalize the gut. Yes, and if you are making the gut more alkaline, you are less likely to get the acid reflux. Also, I would say from a personal point of view again, it's important to keep a food diary. Make a diary of what you're eating each day and the times that you're eating it and make a note of when you get the acid reflux. Because you might see a pattern. You might say, ah, when I'm having these more complicated foods, I'm getting the acid reflux. What I personally do whenever I have acid reflux is to make the foods I'm eating more simple. 
So I will eat uh, just either a piece of meat and vegetables or just vegetables, but I won't put, make it too rich. I won't put anything that is making it complex because when it starts to get uh, complex, that's when you're more likely to get the, the reflux reaction because there are more enzymes having to work at the same time simultaneously in the gut. So rather than um, putting all those different foods in together and creating that complexity in the gut, give it one or two food substances to deal with at a time. Okay, um, bear in mind always the foods which are more sattvic, so your green vegetables, um, and not so much the, the, the broccoli. Broccoli can be, um, I think, a little bit gas producing. Yes, sure, I will, I will find out about a good book. I will speak to Harshit for you. I will speak to Kaudu, our Ayurvedic doctor, and I will ask her to recommend a good book on food, and I will add that into the comments here uh, as soon as I can, okay? Um, so I would say you want to look at the sattvic foods and use those sattvic foods. Use those sattvic foods um, to, to try to introduce more balance into the gut. Um, I, I was a vegetarian. For 16 years, I was vegetarian. Um, but I had a lot of problems with um, assimilation of food. I had a lot of problems with digestion of food, especially in the last few years. And so I spoke to Kaoru Osanai, the uh, doctor Kaoru Osanai, the Ayurvedic doctor who I work with, and she suggested to try to change to put animal protein for a short period of time. So over the last six months, I've been eating animal protein, and actually it has normalized my gut biome. Um, I have a kind of conflict here <coughs> because, <coughs> excuse me, because I personally wish um, that I wasn't eating the animal protein because I, I feel that all our life is equal and I shouldn't necessarily be eating them. But at the same time, I can't deny the fact that it has made me more healthy. So um, that's very good, Alan. Well done. Um, so at this stage, what, I am, what I'm going to do, I'm going to carry on with this uh, meat in the diet for a little bit longer. And then as soon as I find that my gut biome is back to regularity, and I put on a little bit more weight because I've gone down in my weight, then I will start to remove that again and replace it with the, um, the, the non-meat protein. Yeah? Uh, there is certainly a lot of meat available in non-meat food, and there are a lot of people who are um, high-level athletes who are eating vegan diet. Yeah? So it's absolutely possible to sustain the body without meat. Yes, I, I'm seeing these notes about the Hindi. Um, I can put Hindi subtitles, so you can watch this video afterwards and it will have Hindi subtitles. Um, at the moment, I'm not able to speak uh, Hindi, <laughs> uh, nor Malayalam. I can say a few words in Malayalam, so I'm not able to upload this in Hindi, but there can be Hindi subtitles, okay? So if you look back on this video a bit later on, you will be able to, I think, see everything I'm saying in Hindi subtitles, okay? Um, so yes, just to finish that, that point on vegetarianism, um, or veganism for that matter, absolutely as a high level athlete, I think it's possible to maintain good health. In fact, perhaps even better health. Some of the research is saying now better health as a vegan. Yeah? Um, but for one reason or another, my gut was not assimilating that properly. And as a result, uh, as a result, I have to, uh, at least for a little while, take meat protein. Um, okay, um, yes, we could do the video dubbed. I would need to find someone who speaks English and Hindi who could dub the video for me. Um, my, um, I'd be reaching out here, there. Uh, if anyone here watching the video would like to offer to do that, I, I would be very happy and I will uh, give you free access to the course. So if anyone wants to contact me and offer to um, do Hindi dubbing for our videos, um, you can contact me in the comments section here now or you can contact me privately. Um, and I'm very happy to give you free access to the whole course if you are prepared to uh, do the dubbing for our videos, okay? Uh, or voiceover for our videos in Hindi language. That will make the course accessible to a lot more people. I think that could be a really good step forward. So that's a great question and thank you. And I hope someone watching this uh, can come back to us and provide that for us, okay? Um, Good stuff. Okay, so we've just come to the end there uh, of the session. And I'll just take a moment just to repeat where I started because I've seen a lot more of you are now watching um, who were not watching at the beginning. Um, so what I was saying at the beginning is that we're going to create something very exciting this year, the Kalari Lab app. 
and this is going to be a way of gamifying the experience of learning Kalari. And it's going to be a platform game which you move through the map and as you move through the map you will be able to um, go through the different lessons and it will give you an opportunity to reach out and to meet the other players. There will be a two-player version where you can use that two-player version to challenge or not so much challenge but to join other members of the school uh, to be able to train with them alongside them. Okay. Um, Alan, uh, I learned Kalari in Kerala, of course, in Kanur, uh, with KKA, Kerala Kalaripayat, <laughs> Kerala Kalaripayat Academy. Um, the Gurukal there is Gurukal Mohammed Sharif, and I was learning as his student for 20 years. Um, I'm still his student. I will always be his student. And um, they are a very, very successful school, a very solid school. Um, my 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 Gurukala was first teaching Westerners as early as the 80s. He was the first uh, Indian to really come to, the, to Europe. He went to a martial arts festival in Italy under the invitation of a Chinese grandmaster in Chinese martial arts, and he presented Kalari in, in Italy. He also presented Kalari in Germany, and uh, he has now students all over the world. Um, there are schools in Japan, there are schools in UK, schools in France, Germany, Latvia, Thailand, which I set up, Australia, and USA. Um, KKA were the first uh, Indian delegates to go to the World Martial Arts um, meetings in South Korea, where they have a big competition, uh, or it's rather a demonstration from many different martial arts from around the world. And uh, Guru Kal Sharif was the first international delegate of Kalari Payat to go to that festival. They were represented there for 10 years. So, yeah, that's my lineage. Uh, I am always in honor of that lineage um, and grateful for, for the patience of my Guru Kal in receiving the 20-year-old um, Adam, who was quite, quite a handful, shall we say. So, um, thank you all so much for attending. Uh, we'll, we'll run this on for another minute or two to see if any other questions come up. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this Q&A session one evening during the week. And we're going to keep the live class for the for Saturday evening, so you still have this opportunity to ask questions. Um, yes, Alan, absolutely. Karate, Taekwondo, and Kalari is very different. Um, I think what's um, what's interesting about Kalari, and I'll come to your question, Gopal, in a minute for good diet for Kalari practitioners. Uh, what's interesting about Kalari is it has a very in-depth understanding of the subtle body. Uh, all the movements that you are doing will not only build proprioception, uh, balance, co-coordination, flexibility and strength in your physical body. They will look to rebalance and, um, and change the dynamic of your internal body, your subtle body, the way in which your values are operating. Kalari is balancing your values, your five body winds. It's balancing your prakriti, your constitution. And it's balancing... Um, also your, your, your Shiva Shakti, your, your male, female, yeah? So not too much male, not too much female attribute, yeah? It's keeping you in the balance. That's because this is very important for the Kalari practitioner. Okay, another question came in there about a diet for uh, practitioners and asking me to tell the Kalari story. Now, the second question is a very long question, and, and so I think it will have to be the topic of another uh, another presentation, but certainly the diet for Kalari practitioners. Well, when I was in India, our main meal was breakfast. So after training, we would have upma, putu, puri, idli, um, sometimes dosa, sometimes chapati. We would have it with um, uh, those who were eating meat would have meat. I wasn't eating meat, as I said, for 15 years. So when I was there, I would have this with green gram cherapaya or some chickpea curry and then um, bananas, param, param, as you say in Kerala, param, uh, cooked in jaggery. And this was fantastic, the very good breakfast. And we would have maybe 15, 15 idlis like this. And uh, this would be our main meal of the day. Then if we wanted to take lunch, we would take lunch. And um, lunch would be some vegetable curry, some, um, um, some uh, dal curry, uh, some dal, uh, some more rice, a lot of rice and um, possibly some bread, but usually more rice than bread. 
And then in the evening, we would have again a big meal. Again, there would be fish or chicken for those eating meat. I wasn't eating meat. So for me, it was vegetable curry, uh, rice again. And um, there was always variation. There was always two or three curries along with the rice. So we were always getting a very big variation of different vegetables. And then, of course, once in the day, we would be given fruit. So we were eating a very full meal, which was protein rich, protein dominant in the morning, carbohydrate dominant in the evening. Carbohydrate dominant in the evening, so you have in the morning when you wake up, you have that energy available for training. Protein dominant in the morning, so the proteins are there to repair the muscles after exercise. Okay, what do I think about India? I think India is a very beautiful country. Um, I spent five years in Kerala, and I hope to spend uh, at least another five years in Kerala in the future. Uh, it's a very beautiful place that will always be very... Um, much a part of my heart and um, I know that it's difficult at the moment I know there are many uh, difficult situations there um, across the country and I, and, I, and I hope that I wish you and pray for you that, that you can resolve those problems in the best way for you um, another question that came in there is some uh, recipes from from Kerala um, I don't know the names of them uh, I know that I very much like the curry with the drumstick I know that uh, there is an, uh, a very a good curry which was made with um, with this green gram cherapaya, which we used to have in the mornings. I like that very much. I used to have that with the idli or with the dosa. Um, and um, a chickpea curry as well, even sometimes with tofu. Um, the fish, which um, I never ate, um, looked fantastic the way they fried the fish. Um, with the bone in the middle, big nice fillet of fish that looked great. Um, and um, really, my, my favorite thing about Carolyn food was the breakfast putu, idli, and dosa. Sorry, uh, putu, idli, and upma. These three I liked very, very much. Um, <clears throat> will I learn Hindi? Well, it's quite a big effort for me to learn Hindi. I would rather last, learn first Malayalam. Uh, and since Kerala is the place that I have spent most time and I can speak a little I'll try for you now so uh, kulikunu is washing yes uh, kulikunu drinking is that right no no hang on tinunu tinunu eating kulikunu washing or drinking I forget uh, odanu running irikunu sitting uh, odanu running right irikunu sitting Ma, mean birikunu fishing nyang karapuram pogono i am going to the beach okay and that's about it <laughs> so i have very little basic malayalam um so yeah maybe in the future i can learn that now i won't disregard the question that was asked about the history of kalari um from what i can understand kalari certainly originated five to six thousand years ago if not earlier there are written references in the Veda to Mama attacks being used to kill Vritasura, the demon Vritasura. So there was a reference to Marma, which is 5,000 years old. So in that case, we, I cannot say any words in Hindi, I'm sorry. Only Daniwad, that's all I know. Thank you, Daniwad. Um, so I know that there was, uh, or we know rather, that there, there existed a, a reference to marma, which is of course the attacking techniques to the specific points on the body that was written 100, uh, sorry, written uh, 5,000 years ago. Now, we also know that um, within Kerala, um, Kalari had several stages in its development. Okay, we know that um, at a certain point there was... Um, a structuring of Kalari, uh, where um, para, where um, ah his name has gone out of my head. The saint, there was a, a great saint, and he created 108 Kalari across uh, the country. Uh, yes, of course, I come to Bodhidharma in a moment. Um, and these these different Kalari, they uh, were responsible for kind of um, creating um, a program and a structure to the learning in which boys and girls were, were welcomed into that. So the Kalari, every village would have a Kalari where they taught not only the physical exercise but also maths and science and arts. It was a place of learning and every village had one of these. And then, of course, Bodhidharma, it seems Bodhidharma was a prince. He was studying Kalari for many years 
and he then traveled north with that knowledge and he went first of all he went to um into uh, myanmar and in myanmar he sat in a cave and there in the cave he devised qigong and then from this cave he went to china now in china there is the old shaolin monastery and written on the wall there's a painting of a very dark-skinned man believed to be bodhidharma surrounded by very light-skinned men who are thought to be the chinese monks and underneath it says Chinese monks learn Indian empty hand techniques. So what this suggests to us is that there was a knowledge that passed from Bodhidharma to those Chinese monks and that was created and became Kung Fu. It's then thought that Bodhidharma traveled on to Japan and it's thought uh, in doing so was seeded what became later Karate. Also in, in Thailand you have Muay Thai and Muay Thai uh, originated in the southwestern part of the country in Krabi province. And Krabi province, which is on the coast, is where the boats that would come in, taking the spices from India, arrived into Thailand. So it's thought that on those boats came the knowledge of Kalari to arrive in Thailand. Also, you have a martial art called Kil Kali, which is practiced in the Philippines, alongside Silat, and, the, and Kali they do acknowledge the route to Kalari. And one thing I will say just to finish, um, the World Martial Arts Federation, they were um, inviting uh, Kalari every year to be demonstrated. Now, at this, at this um, meeting in South Korea, they had only 50 martial arts demonstrated. So not every year was every martial art able to be represented. But they insisted that every year Kalari was there because they acknowledged Kalari as the grandmother, the oldest of all the martial arts disciplines. And that is coming from um, a body of martial arts which is very um, well known and recognized, shall we say. Um, okay, I think we'll leave it there. I can see there's still a few questions coming in. So keep the questions coming in. If you're watching this video after we've um, finished this session, please put your questions still. And I will start off with those questions in the next session, okay? If necessary, I will do some research. I will speak to my Guru Kal, so I will get a better answer for you, okay? So thank you ever so much for your time today. Uh, I again apologize for those of you who came expecting a live class, but this time next week, we will have a live class. I will be well again, and I will be happy to, to see you all here. We will move this questions and answer session to one evening during the week. I think very possibly we could make it Wednesday evening. And I will put a note on the community board. So if you keep an eye on the community board, that's for members and non-members. If you look on our community board of the channel, you'll be able to see, and I'll make sure I put that up on Monday to let you know the time. But I'm, I'm thinking it will be the same time on Wednesday. Okay, so thank you so much for your time. Uh, keep practicing. Take your time. There's uh, always um, no need to rush, but everything is possible, okay? With Kalari, it's all possible. So thank you again, and Nale Kanam. And yes, I will keep making the videos. And yes, you will keep seeing more of the animal moves. Okay, great. Thank you so much.